There we go. Um, hey, Becca. Hi. We are in week, um, I know what day we're on. Six, are we in I six? Think. We're in week six. Um, probably. And <laughs> here's what I know. We are, uh, this is between Leviticus 15 and today ends num uh, Numbers chapter 7. Yes. So we're definitely in that. <laughs> and then uh, whatever the label says when we post it online, that's what week we're in. I think it's six. I think it's six. Yeah. All right. Um, we have a lot of questions this week, uh, so we're going to kind of like machine gun through them. And as always, the questions that come in, uh, from church have absolute top priority. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to hit that. And so we've got a couple that have come in from the, the congregation here. Yeah. Hit us. So in Leviticus twenty six twelve, it talks about God walking with the Israelites. Okay. So does God? Did God literally walk with them? Okay, Leviticus twenty six twelve. Was that? Did they write that as part of the question, or did you go look yes. it up? All right, that's cool. Yep. All right, no guessing there. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus twenty six. Now, if I told you the right one, hopefully, I might have told you the right one. I'm just not there yet. 26, okay. Um, 12. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. Okay. So we can say, yes, we know that God <laughs> did walk among them yes. because he says, he I so. will walk among you. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Yeah. Because um, nobody was supposed to see the face of God, right? Right. Um, but I have a feel. I think that there's an if. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them. So I'm back in verse 3. Then I will give you rain. Then your threshing shall last. Then I'll give you peace in the land. You'll chase your enemies. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. Uh, so we know that at various times, if you read any book in this Bible, uh, this group did not do those things. Right. Um, I, but we do know, okay, so as they're coming out of Egypt, um, for instance, Jesus says, hey, I, I was the rock mm -hmm. in, you know, um, come to me who, who thirst mm -hmm. and he stands up in the temple and, and that's kind of the celebration they were doing at the time, if I remember right, was celebrating the uh, water that came out of the rock that traveled with them. Um, so in a very real sense, yes. But I also think that we... Um, I don't fall in the camp of people that allegorize everything, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. say, this is a substitute for this, and this means this, and a secret hidden meaning. But I do think where there are clear figures of speeches and their clear metaphors um and and we do this if i if i call it and i say hey i have no idea how to set up this website he might say hey let me walk you through it mm -hmm. well he's not going to come over here and walk with me right through right, this right. but but we talk about walking someone through it meanwhile um you know if we have you know, a couple that, that we're counseling and we might say that we're walking alongside them mm -hmm. where in reality we might never walk anywhere with them. Right, right. And so I, I think that that idea of um, walking among you is kind of a figure of speech. Okay. Uh, we do, however, see when, and we know this because when uh, the tabernacle moves, God tells Moses, hey, the cloud, right. my okay. glory, mm -hmm. my presence is going to rest above you. When I move, you move. Don't move till I do. Right. And that cloud is it's his his presence, his presence yeah. uh, in the Old Testament. So I think the walking among you is metaphorical, but I think definitely in a very real, tangible way, he was there with them. We see that in the uh, tabernacle. I believe there's... Uh, when, when we did talk about the temple, mm -hmm. when the temple was set up, there there was a very real presence of the Lord that the Bible talks about that um, now that we are the temple and so his uh, presence rests in us. But before this, I think that there was a very real, very tangible 
Um, maybe even they could point to something and go, see that, that's the presence of mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so I don't mean to just dismiss it as spiritual, but I, I do think that it was um, a figure of speech here. Okay. If you listen to a really great sermon online, they ask, he makes a better point for something else, hey, send it to me. Okay. Okay? All right. What's the next one? The next one was, um, what is the significance of unleavened bread? Ooh, unleavened bread. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a verse for that, or is it just kind of... That was just a question. Okay. We have a feast of unleavened bread. Mm-hmm. We, uh, a lot of the stuff, in fact, uh, the historian Josephus tells us that the showbread was made with unleavened bread. Right, yep. Uh, the best commentary on the Old Testament is the, the Bible, New, New Testament. Testament. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm remembering, so Jesus is in a boat, and he's already fed like 5,000 people with a couple of sardines and a, a piece of toast, right? <laughs> and he looks at his disciples and says, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. Can we can we pull that up? Do you have that? Um, I've got Matthew sixteen five right Yeah, if you I'm just sure Google that's "Beware the Leaven of the Pharisees," that'll take us right there. I'll race you. Matthew, that's right, because Matthew's talking about the Jewish Messiah. Okay. Matthew, uh, you said 16.5? 16.5, yes. All right. And he says, here we go. Now, when his disciples had come to the other side, because they're in a boat, they're going across uh, probably the Sea of Galilee, if I remember right. Uh, Now, when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And here's how we know that this is a symbol for something. They said, oh no, we forgot bread. (laughs) And Jesus said, you have little faith. Don't you remember when I fed all these people and then I fed all those other people? I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay, so we know that there's more going on here than bread, right? We right. Jesus himself. Mm-hmm. So when we think about leaven, leaven is um, yeast. Right. And yeast is, it, it's a live thing, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, is yeast, is it biologically the same as a fungus? I don't know. People are like, I'm I've never going to eat pizza I've heard again. it is, but I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeast is a living thing. And the way it... it um, I remember when I worked at Johnny's Pizza, we would have these huge barrels of dough, like thick trash cans, and we'd have this little bitty packet, and you'd pour it in the bread. For all my Oregonian friends, they're like, gluten-free, baby. Okay, when you guys make your L's and your beers and your craft whatevers, you still have that little bitty packet that you pour of yeast that you pour into the um, cider or whatever you're making. And, and it only takes a little bit because as they eat, they reproduce. And they eat and, and then bread rises because it's eaten all the... Now air has filled up all those spots mm. where it's eaten. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And that's why, like, remember when everyone went nuts and bought... Um, I don't know, we're going we're gonna to kill germs with toilet paper and... Um, uh, sourdough starters. Okay. Right. Everyone just bought all the toilet paper and the sat. Was that 2020? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, Re- you, I don't remember y'all remember. Starters. Y'all remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and so you fun. couldn't buy yeast anywhere because everyone had bought it all up. Okay. And so the way is, uh, bread works is if you take a little bit of dough that's already had yeast in it, put it in a whole new pack of dough, it's going to permeate all that and you can just keep going forever. Mm-hmm. And so throughout the Bible, this yeast is. This leaven is a um, is an example of sin. That yes. a little bit, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole oh, wow. lump. Mm-hmm. And man, you you really cannot give quarter to to any of that. And so when we see the Old Testament being set up as holy and pure and perfect, now not to say it's sinful to use 
yeast. Right. Because there's several things in here that God commands them to use yeast. So it's right. not sinful to use yeast, but yeast is a uh, symbolic, a lot of times, of sin. And, and specifically, uh, as we read through, it's um, sometimes generally sin and sometimes specifically hypocrisy. Okay. It's, it's pretending to, do, to be and do one thing, um, but inside, we're, it, this thing is eaten up and it's corrupted mm -hmm. our, our whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, there are a bunch of verses I could draw, and I think I'm just going to summarize it that whole way. Yeah. And if you read your Bible with that picture in mind, you'll when you see those other verses, you'll go, oh, this is what Adon was talking yeah. about. All right. Um, I told you guys last week I was super excited about Leviticus 16 because Leviticus 16 is when we get to the high priest stuff. And so um, Leviticus and Numbers, man, I get really jazzed about because all of the questions, all of the unanswerable questions in the New Testament suddenly make sense with these two books because they didn't need to answer them because they knew these two books. So they didn't need to fill us in right. on what they already knew. So... Um, read, if you will, John chapter 20, verse 5. So this is, as New Testament believers, we're all familiar with the book of John, and we just kind of take things at face value. You said 20, verse Chapter 20, verse 5. That says, And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Okay, so this is, they, they've run to the tomb. Mm -hmm. Christ has been resurrected. Mm -hmm. And their clothes laying there. Yeah. Why? <laughs> like he just, and now he's gone naked and he's just left his clothes there. And for years I was like, why? How does, and no one else cared. I said, why did, and the pastor goes, I don't know. And, and then I would go to my Sunday school teacher and she's like, I don't know. And no one else seemed to wonder why he left his clothes there. And that bothered me. And it bothered me until I read Leviticus chapter 16. Is this where... This, they were folded. His linens were folded. They were folded, sure. Because that's a, like, isn't that I'm returning if they're put. Well, let's see what you have to tell me. No, no, I, tell I, me I, what you've heard. I'm yeah. remembering, I'm remembering a, a, a sermon, yeah. just a little bit of it, of if, like, it's a sign of I will be returning if the if they're folded. And see, here's the problem. When pastors, <laughs> pastors preach through the Bible, they get to a verse and they have to say something on it. Yeah. And because they don't know what to say, we get all kinds of wonky stuff. Yeah. So if we go back to Leviticus. Okay. Chapter 16. Just like Leviticus. Chapter 16. And so um, Jesus is, uh, uh, God, God's talking to about the Day of Atonement. Okay. And here's what atonement means. Atonement is an English word <clears throat> for the, you know, English translation for the Hebrew word. And the at one meant atonement, at one meant, that, that's a really good explanation. Of, I mean, that's where the word came from. It's what it means. And so the day of at one meant is the day that God and his people can, can reconcile and become one. Okay. And once a year, the high priest uh, goes into the Holy of Holies and God's laying out when he can go, when he can't go, make sure you're pure or I will kill you, like all mm. of that, right? And then he takes one bull, makes the sacrifices, all of that, and when he's done, then, verse 23, chapter 16, ready? Yep. Then Aaron shall, now the high priest. Okay. The, then Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of meeting, shall take off the linen garments which he put on when he went to the holy place, and shall leave them there. Okay. Which is what Christ did. Which is what, that's why he left his clothes there. Mm. Because Aaron being the high priest, the one who makes uh, the sacrifice that allows God and his people to be reconciled, he says, when you've done that on that day, take off your clothes and leave them there. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus' clothes were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if we continue on in chapter 16, we get to verse 32. Um, and... And I love this. And the priest who is anointed and consecrated to minister as priest in his father's place. Mm. 
in his father's place. So we think of Jesus as being the high priest. And of course, uh, literally in the moment, it's talking about uh, Aaron and then Aaron's sons and then their sons and right in their father's place. Okay. But that's all Hebrews tells us. It's all a picture and a shadow mm. of, of Christ, our high priest, ministering in his father's place. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Love this book. <laughs> Love this book. Okay. Um, so also John 19, if you'll remember, and I'll just kind of sum this up. You don't have to turn there. Um, the soldiers are throwing lots for different stuff. That means dice. They're gambling for mm -hmm. his, his stuff. And then they um, they get his garment and they don't rip it. Mm. They they don't tear it up, okay. right? Because right. otherwise they wouldn't have had to gamble for it. They'd have just right. cut Separated it in pieces. It. Okay. Right. Well, it's because Acts is twenty eight verse thirty two, and and this was a little we didn't cover it when we went through it, but while we're while I'm all excited in the Old Testament, Exodus twenty eight thirty two says. Can we read it? There's, uh, it shall have, uh, I've got the wrong verse. It's okay. Also, I'm not, basically, uh, the high priest tunic, it, it was supposed, supposed to be seamless. One piece mm -hmm. can't be ripped. Um, <clears throat> let's go with, um, the Passover. So one of the, feast that we see uh, as we we're going through the section is the Passover. Right. <clears throat> and so we've already read in this reading plan uh, what the Passover was. It was uh, Christ, uh, I'm sorry, it was um, the children of Israel coming out of bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they were to take the lamb, slaughter it, put the blood on the okay, wood of their door. Mm -hmm. And because the blood of the lamb was on the door, uh, the angel of death passed Passover. over them, mm -hmm. didn't kill them. Yeah. And so now they've come out, Leviticus, they're having a feast to that. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if we talked much about it, about Jesus being the, the door, the only way. Yeah, I don't think we um, did on this anyway. John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, when he sees Jesus, speaking of that Passover lamb whose blood goes on the wood so that we could pass through right. to leave bondage. Mm -hmm. So all of that. And one thing I wanted to pass out... Uh, to point out, as we're kind of going through the, all the Passover feasts, is there is a, um, if we back up to Exodus, and it's in chapter 12, and let's go ahead and read it. I know Exodus was behind us, but this this will be worth it. And again, because we're going over, right now, we're going over the Passover feast, and I really want us to catch why this matters. And remember, Jesus was crucified on Passover. Mm -hmm. Right. Fulfilling that, that Passover uh, prophecy. Uh, 12 and then verse 3. See there? Yes. So 12 verse 3 says, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father. And it kind of goes on for a while. So the tenth of the month. On the tenth of the month, you take this lamb in mm -hmm. and you examine him. And then we get down to verse 6. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day. So from the 10th mm -hmm. to the 14th mm -hmm. keep, uh, of the same month. Then the whole congregation of Israel shall kill it. And if we that think about it. the fact, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, the fact that Jesus came in on Palm Sunday. Yeah. And Pontius Pilate said, I can find no fault in him. Mm -hmm. The other That's leaders okay. said, hey, mm -hmm. we can't kill him. He hasn't done anything wrong according to our laws. You kill him. No, we can't. You kill him. Right. And so he's examined mm -hmm. this whole time, and then they slaughter him. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering, like, why does why do all these Bible uh, authors tell us about this examination period? Well, when he says, I've come to fulfill the law, mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't miss, right. miss a beat. Mm -hmm. So... um. Hmm. I did promise this in a sermon a couple weeks ago, um, the showbread. So we talked about, uh, remember Jesus came in, his, um, his disciples were plucking grain, and the Pharisees got upset, and he said, don't you remember what David did when the priests let David eat the showbread, and we kind of 
preached on exactly what yes. that was about. And I said we'd get to the specifics of the showbread here. And we're reading it. Okay. So the showbread, as you read, uh, 12, Josephus tells us there were unleavened, there was unleavened. Uh, you got 12, one, you know, symbolizing each tribe. Each tribe yeah. And the importance of, when we look at the tabernacle, which eventually became the temple, was the entire thing, and, and we talked about this last week, was a picture and a type of the real temple in heaven. Right, yeah. Okay. And the showbread, uh, also 8-5, it was, um, Hebrews 8-5, uh, was a shadow. Okay. Okay, so we've got 12 loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. And exa uh, if we go back to Exodus 25, um, so in Leviticus, it lays out kind of where all the, it is in the showbread, but Exodus 25 is him telling him, hey, this is what you're going to build. And he tells us this. <clears throat> Verse 30. Per <laughs> And you shall set the bread of presence on the table before me always. And so depending on your version, it, it calls it a few things. And one of the things it calls it is a bread, the bread of presence. Mm -hmm. When Jesus says, um, he says, I am the bread of life. Yep. I am the manna that came down from heaven. He says, I am the bread. In fact, uh, the word Bethlehem, uh, Bethlehem uh, is house of bread. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why in Ruth, when it says there was no bread in Bethlehem, there's no bread in the house of bread. So they went to, anyway. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. So Jesus is the bread mm -hmm. of life. So this showbread is, is, a, is symbolic. It's a picture in the tabernacle of Christ himself and his presence. Right. So, Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One last thing uh, before we um, go, and this is kind of going to be a visual so walk through me, walk with me through it. See, walk with me walk through it. it. Um, and then I'm going to show you the visual. Uh, and I did this one time because uh, I just got bored of reading this. And so I just drew it out one time. So if we go to Numbers 2. Numbers 2. And any time you find yourself in a boring spot, that's a really awesome time uh, for God to show you something cool, to go, okay, it's here. Your, your Bible yeah. says every verse is awesome and cool and does stuff. Why am I reading this? Yeah. So if we go to Numbers 2, and honestly, it's just like, so-and-so had an army with this many people, and so-and-so had an army with this many people. Um, and he says, everyone's going to camp... Uh, According to their father's house, they shall camp some distance from the tabernacle of meeting. So the tabernacle is the tent that they're making the temple from. Mm -hmm. Remember, the houses, the tribes of Israel, Israel was Jacob, who was renamed Israel. Right. Jacob had 12 sons, but <laughs> Joseph had Ephraim and Manasseh. Anyway, um, when we talk about 12 tribes of Israel, we're talking about the sons of, of Jacob, Jacob. who have become the tribes. Okay. okay. So first we have a tabernacle, right? Yeah. That's my tabernacle. Cool? <laughs> yeah. All right. Then to the east. Oh, you showed me this before. I know. This is my favorite. Yeah. Um, let's see. How do I want to do this? I want to do it this way. Okay. To the east, we have uh, Judah. Okay? Judah. Uh, talks about who's going to lead the army. It says... That number is going to be 74,600. Okay? You guys tracking this? You see that? Okay. 74,600. <laughs> then, next to him will be Issachar. And he's got uh, 54,400. All right. Uh, then we've got Zeb Zebulon to the, um, oh, still to the east, right? Um, Zebulon still to the east. Um, and his army will be 57,400. Okay. On the south side, 
So that's east. So on the south side, and I'll kind of go through this quickly, and then I'll show you the visual I'm making. That Ruben. Uh, we got Ruben, and he's got. 46,500. 46,500. Then we've got Simeon. Simeon's got. 59,300. 59,300. Then we get Gad. 45,650. 45,650. Do you want the total number or no? Uh, of what? The camp of Reuben. Mine ends with the total number. And it just adds all the Yeah, numbers. so all of those with Reuben, here we go, 100... 51,000. 51,000. 450. 450. And then with Judah, all of Judah's, we've got... 186,000. 186,000. 400. 400. Okay. All right, yeah, just give me the totals from here on out. And so then we've got to the west... Uh, <laughs> on the west side is Ephraim, on the west side is Manasseh, and on the west side is Benjamin, and all of those guys, You're way ahead of me here. Uh, I'm in verse 24, is 100, 108,000, 8, 100. 100, okay, and then on the north side, so here's where we're at so far, if you guys are are doing this with us at home. The ones in circles are the total. Okay, stick with me. And, Dan. and then on the north side, we have Dan. And we don't want all the little ones. Uh, we have Dan, then it should be Asher, right? Uh, Dan, Asher, Naphtali, because that spells Dan. Yep. And the total of that is, is 157,600. 157,600. All right, so I want you guys to notice something. I want you to notice that we've got this number and this number are about the same, right? Then we have this number and this number. So what we're looking at is two equal sides, a short side, sorry, a short side and a long side. <laughs> so if we turn it this way, <laughs> we've got two equal sides a short side and a long side. We might need a different marker or pen. To and what is, <laughs> what do you get when you have two equal sides, a short side, and a long side? You have a cross. You have a cross. <laughs> um, and so in the middle of this cross, we have the tabernacle. And remember we talked about, um, so Judah's on the east, east side, uh, but they're east in Hebrew is forward or up, right? Forward or up. Yep. And so we have Judah leading this out. When, when, when this were to move forward, what you would look down and see, if you had an aerial view, is you would see a cross mm. moving forward, being led by the tribe of Judah. That's pretty cool. That's a great visual. And I just think every single thing that is in this book is just amazing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. I think that's... Um, Really fun, really cool. Whenever you get to numbers, guys, numbers are always in there for a reason. Both, both the book of numbers. Um, but numbers are often in there for a reason, and we kind of just tune them out because we don't care. Let's get to the action. Right, right. Um, but remember, guys, these guys were chiseling. These guys were, like, putting, like, quills on, on sheepskin. I mean, this it was hard to write at that time. And so every word that they put in here would have been worth it. Yeah. And so, yeah, when you're reading just the numbers and the numbers, one, it's, these are how big the, the armies were. But the other thing was, it, it was a really cool visual that God made of this cross being led by Judah through the wilderness um, <laughs> with the tabernacle in the middle. It's pretty neat. So, um, I could go on and on about Leviticus and numbers because, because I just, I love Jesus and I love how, amazing he shows up even when we don't see him he's mm -hmm. he's everywhere yeah. um okay any questions on from you any things no. that stood out as you were reading not really i mean we kind of covered a lot of that so. we did cover a lot of that yeah. okay yeah. um today is the today is the 12th today is the 12th um 
I say this every week. I'm going to keep saying it. For those of you that have been uh, with us and doing your reading and keeping up, and we are excited to be in this adventure together and with you guys. We love when you give us the questions. We think it's so exciting when, when we just chat about that stuff. But if you're seeing this video for the first time mm -hmm. and it's February or you might be seeing this video in June, that's fine. Start, start where you're at. Jump in on whatever day of the reading plan. Let's do a link. Can we throw a link uh, to the reading plan into the, we're going to do that in the comments. I'm not sure how to do that. But... We'll, we'll figure it out. So if you're not on the reading plan, but you think, hey, I think this would be the year that I'm going to jump in on it. We're going to send you a link starting today. Whatever today is for you, uh, start today and jump in with us and let's have a good time. Yeah. As always, send us your questions. Uh, we'll do our best to get to them. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, if you're local, uh, see you tomorrow. And then for us, in real time, tomorrow's the uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So um, we'll get together after church and hang out and watch some football and eat some chips and have a good time. Yep. Okay, say bye. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>